Welcome to this week's sim racing video. Today, we're gonna to take a look at this uh, shifter mount for the play seat challenge courtesy of Mark at Lowdown Shifter. Now, a big thank you to you, Mark, for sending these over. We, um, we actually spoke at length on the phone about all sorts of, of random things, far adrift of sim racing, but it was, it was nice to have a, a catch up and a good conversation. And he, he sent me these, this over. Um, he didn't actually send it over for review, he just sent it over because he wanted to send it over to me because I didn't have one. But obviously I'm gonna do a review because this is a sim racing channel primarily, and this is a new product that I've not used before. You might have seen my other videos on shifter mounts for the play seat challenge, um, but I haven't, I haven't had one of these low down shifter ones. So I've not even opened them yet. I thought I'd save that for the, for the video. So we've got two packages here. Um, and I must, one of the things I do like about this straight away is, is the packaging, the, the detail, the design. And I'm wondering, Mark, if, the, if that's you by any chance, or if you've got someone else to, to pose for these pictures. If anyone, in, anyone watching knows, let me know in the comments if that is actually Mark. Or Mark, maybe you'll let me know yourself when you watch this video, because I'm sure you will. But yes, I do like the packaging design. It's pretty sweet. Um, and so we've got, we've got a thank you on the back of the box here, which you guys can take a look at. Um, and, uh, and yeah, like I said, I've, I've not even opened it yet. So let's get it open um, and see what we've got. It's just two packages. We've got part one of two, part two of two. So everything is here. Um, so let's, let's get this, this one open and see what we've got in here. I won't drag this out because unboxings can be boring. So this looks like, again, look at that. Is that your face in there, Mark? Is that you sneakily putting yourself in the products? I think it might be. I would do if it was me. So this looks like this is gonna be the actual, the actual mount itself, because we got two what look like six mil holes here, which is what you would secure your shifter to. This is for the uh, Logitech um, series of, of wheels and shifters, by the way. Um, he does stuff for Thrustmaster, for Fnatic. In fact, he does all sorts of stuff as well as shifter mounts. So cup holders, headphone holders, um, controller, Xbox, PlayStation controller, like mounts and, and holders, you know, things to put your bits and pieces on, all for the play seat challenge. I think there's a, there's a HOTAS set up for you, if you're into your flight sims, there's a farming um, mount system if you're into, you know, your heavy machinery and you've got all your different control boxes and what have you. So take a look at the website. It is literally lowdownshifter.com, I believe is the actual web address. Yeah, it is. Um, and have a look at what he does. He does all sorts of stuff on there, way more than I, than I realized. I'd heard of him, I'd heard of the, the shift amount, but I hadn't looked at the website um, in detail, and there's all sorts of stuff there. Um, there are handbrake mounts as well, again, Thrustmaster um, and Fnatic, uh, and you know all, all sorts of stuff, so take a peek. But yeah, this is for the Logitech G920 or G27, um, either of their, their mounts, probably even the G25. So I think, yeah, this is probably our, our plate itself that we that we bolt it to. Um, that's just what come in there. So let's have a look inside this one again. Nice packaging. Now, it looks like this outer sleeve, yeah it is. This outer sleeve is actually glued on. I was hoping I could slide it out, but it looks like I might actually have to tear it up to get in. I can't see a, an easy way, an easy way to open this without butchering it which is a shame. Oh no, I've managed to not tear it. Nice. So, oop. so we've got some little stickers um, that have just fallen out on the floor. Now, I'm using a different camera today, or a different phone, I should say. To me, the text all looks reversed, so I'm hoping it isn't reversed for you guys. And if it is, maybe I'll see what I can do about it in post. But yeah, these are little stickers that come with it. Nice little touch if you want to put some low down shift delivery on the uh, when you play seat challenge, and there's, the, there's another one. Again, I'm wondering if that's you, Mark. Maybe it is, maybe it isn't. So yeah, so we've got, uh, anything else in here? No, that's that. So there's our packaging done. Um, what have we got in here then? I'm assuming this is gonna be the clamp itself for securing it to the play seat. Again, I've not, I've not seen one of these before, so I have no clue. Price-wise, you're looking at, I think, about 32, 33 quid, which from memory 
is comparable to the official play seat shifter mount, which is just a plate that comes out the side of the steering wheel base. I don't, I don't really like that, to be honest. It puts the shifter in a crap position. Um, and, uh, and for just one plate of metal, it's expensive. You know, you don't get nice design packaging like you do here. You don't get a bunch of free stickers. You don't get your plate with your clamp, a couple of nice end caps. We've got some screws, some washers, some bolts, and they little rubber, rubber washers in there. Maybe I think there is, we'll see when we get it open. Everything here is labeled again. So this one here, Logitech right-hand drive, and I've actually crunched it up a little bit, but on there on the tape again, right-hand drive. I mean, I suppose it's easier for Mark to make sure he's sending out the right one, but also it means you know you've got the right one that you ordered also. So, let's get this open and have a little goosey inside. And in case anyone wonders, the reason I'm using a different phone to shoot the video now is because my old Galaxy S10 peed me off so much that I've had to get rid of it and go back to the phone I had before, which is a Sony XZ1 Compact. Much nicer phone, but the front-facing camera that I use to record video doesn't support the same software as what the S10 did. So unfortunately, I haven't got the same controls over the video quality, but hopefully it still comes out good enough. This is the first time I've tried it, so we shall see. Right, waffling on. Here is our clamp. Again, we've got the low down shifter logo on there. It's weighty as well. It's very, very weighty, which is always a good sign of quality. We've got rubber grippy bit inside there, which is obviously what's gonna clamp to the frame of the play seat challenge. A couple of what looked like four mil Allen key fitments there, I'm guessing at. That feels good. We've also got another couple of rubber inserts there as well. I don't know if they're just spare or if they are a different size, they don't look a different size. So I think maybe you just get spares. Again, that's a nice touch. Should you lose one, damage one, maybe they wear it out, I don't know. There's, there's extras there. And we've got this little piece here. I'm not sure what that's for yet. I'm yet to actually look at Mark's emailed instructions. And he did have a little bit of a joke with me because I do reference not reading instructions often, being a man, we do think we know what we're doing all the time. Um, but I did promise him I would take a look. So I will take a look at the instructions in a minute before I get to the fitting it on the play seat section. So we'll find out what that's for. Um, so yeah, we get little rubber caps there. There's your clamp. We have an Allen key in here. Oh, so I'm guessing it's four mil, it looks about four mil. And then yeah, our little bag of, of other bits and pieces here. So first impressions, good build quality, good weight to it. Nice little touches with spares, some stickers, everything's neatly labeled and bagged up. Um, the presentation of the packaging was really nice. And again, this, this is two. I also believe these are available in potentially different colors. I can't quite remember now. Sorry, Mark, we did have the conversation a few weeks ago. Um, and he's also got, I mentioned other products, there's an ultimate package coming out fairly soon as well, I believe. So, um, Keep your eyes open on the website for what that entails. But yeah, there's all sorts on there, so take a peek. Anyway, first impressions are good so far. Um, like I said, the price is comparable to the official play seat one, which is nowhere near as thought out as what this is. These, as I say, this is the right-hand drive version. They do a left-hand drive version as well, so you would obviously choose, depending on where you are in the world, you would choose what you want or your preference. You know, maybe you're, like Mark says on the website, maybe you're used to driving left-hand driving simulators and so that's how you want it to be even though you're in the UK. So the option's there. Anyway, enough of that waffling on. We've unboxed it, it's taken long enough. Bloody, what are we, nine minutes in already? Let's, um, let's cut to the installing it on the play seat and see how easy that is to do. Right, I've reviewed Mark's instructions and to be honest, they're worth reading because there's actually quite a few little bits and pieces here. Uh, and if you don't know where to put them, you might not figure it out. I think I would have done, but it was worth reading them nonetheless. Um, also, a couple of other things to, to note. Uh, it, Mark gives you a, a four mil Allen key, which is what you use to secure your shifter to the plate through, well, you don't do that, but <laughs> you know what I mean. You use 
the M6 uh, bolts and they require your 4 mil Allen key and then you put those through there and you secure your shifter to it using those. So he supplies you with, with, the, with the 4 mil Allen key you need for that. But on top of this, you also need a, was this six, uh, a 5 mil Allen key for this big bolt here. You need a 30 mil spanner for the nut that goes on the end of the bolt I just showed you and you'll see where these all go in a second. And you also need a 2.5 mil Allen key for use with these tiny little ones here. And again, I'll show you what those are for right now. So just so you know, two and a half mil, five mil, 13 mil spanner. I think that's everything we need. So um, yeah, let's get it installed. So first of all, I think we'll secure, we'll secure this to this. First of all, I think. Um, so to do that, you grab your big, your big bolt, and then you grab one of these metal penny washers, slide that over like that. Then grab one of your rubber washers, of which there are three, so there is a spare one, because we only use two. This then, from above, you can go up either way, doesn't make any difference, however you want it goes through like that. Now, this little um, metal sleeve insert that I speculated that I didn't know what it was for earlier in the video is for when you use the extension bar uh, that I don't have with this kit because I, I didn't need it. So we don't actually use that. That can go to one side. Um, if you did, I may as well tell you what it's for if you did. If you did, you would put it in here and then there would be an extension bar that comes out and then this would go on the extension bar. But we're not doing that, so we don't need it. Um, so, that's on there like that. That then goes down onto here, like this. And then on the underside, grab another rubber one, another penny washer, and then that 13 mil nut that I told you about. And we do this up like this. Now this is a nylock nut, so it will only go so far before you do need to get your spanner. And actually before we before we do that up, we're going to put in what, um, what Mark calls his anti-twist system. The reason for that is that if I do this up where it needs to be now, it's going to be in the way and you'll see why in a second. So leave that on there loosely or do what I'm about to do now first, wherever you feel like. So, grab your tiny little bolts, I've forgotten what size they are, and one tiny little washer. Now, depending what mount system you have, you will choose either the bottom two holes here or the upper two holes there. For us, I believe it's the bottom two. So, push it through from above, like that. Then grab another one of those tiny little washers and put that on the underside, like that. And then you've got two of these little sleeves. They're threaded on the inside. They screw onto your bolt. Just nip them up finger tight for the moment against the washer there. Now, in fact, I'm actually gonna have to, yeah, so we're actually gonna have to remove this because I should have done this bit first. See, I read the instructions, Mark, and I'm still getting it wrong. So, yeah. Um, pop this back out. So well, there's another one of these to fit and when it's in place it will stop it twisting like this when you're using it. So let's grab the other one, bolt, small washer, Oop. try not to drop the small washers, through the hole, get the other washer, the underneath the other sleeve and carefully wind this on. These, should be, these are quite delicate, so make sure you don't cross thread things or anything during this installation, in fact. Now, this is what your small two and a half mil Allen keys for. I'm gonna give it a little nip up with that. I'm only, again, you know, I'm only holding the sleeves with my fingers, so they're not gonna be mega tight. You won't be able to over tighten them, I don't think. Oh no, it does actually. So when you get to a certain point, these do stop moving of their own accord because you've done it up tight enough. 
Yeah, so lovely, right, they're on there. You can see those there now. Now we can put this piece on and you'll see why I've had to do it this way around as soon as I do it. So we push this through here and so they stop this from from moving around too much. There is a tiny little bit of play. I mean, that might disappear. Now, to be honest, here's an interesting point. Mark's diagram, I'm 99% certain this, I will check afterwards. Mark's diagram only showed using this for the extension bar. But I can see if I put this in here, now, like this, that's gonna remove what little play there was left to right. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna put it in and I'm gonna use it. Maybe that's just a, something that needs amending on the instructions or maybe I'm remembering the instructions wrong. I mean, I have already tried to fit it wrong once, so it could just be me. But anyway, put that in there like that. Um, you could also put it in from above, which would raise this up a touch. I don't really see an advantage, actually I do see an advantage to that. Okay, this top plate, you might not be able to see it, is actually the, the washers for these um, anti-twist bars are actually sitting on top of here. So that's gonna make it slightly uneven. If I put this in from above, like that, I can't think of, I can't see how I've missed this in the instructions. Maybe, maybe, I, maybe I have. If I put that in from about from there, that's gonna, it's now gonna sit level when I do that up tight. And your anti-twist bars are still there, they're still gonna stop it from twisting around. So yeah, and now the two little washers underneath here are obviously not sat sort of, they were, they were slightly wonky like that, or they would have done if I'd done this big bolt up tight. So yeah, I'm gonna go with that option. Mark, if I've got this all horribly wrong, feel free to correct me in the comments, um, or by email, or by phone, or however you choose, mate. But uh, yeah, maybe I missed this in the instructions, maybe I didn't, but to me, it looks logical to have it there, giving us that little bit of clearance, because those two small washers underneath these bolts here were just half hanging over the edge of this, and I didn't like that, they didn't look like a clean install to me. So. Now we can grab a 30 mm span. See, this is actually slightly more complicated than you would think for a shift amount. It is good to read the instructions. Um, so now we're literally just gonna nip this up. Um, it doesn't need to be stupid tight because we have got rubber washers under the penny washers. So if you over tighten these, all you're gonna do is squish them out, distort them and perhaps even tear them. So we're gonna nip it up to what I feel is just, just nice to make it solid. And again, we've got a nylock nut there, so it isn't gonna vibrate itself undone, it isn't gonna wobble undone. Right, how does that feel? That feels solid. There's no, yeah, there's no movement there now. So we've got our two anti-twist bars preventing that twist. And we've got the little spacer sleeve in there, keeping those washers off the, off the edges here, which I didn't particularly like. Uh, and we've got our main nut and bolt through there keeping it all solid. So, that probably took far longer than it should have, but nonetheless, it's done. So now, let's get this onto the play seat, shall we? Now, we've got two bolts there that need to come out to allow this half off, and then we put it on, put it back, do them up. That shouldn't take very long. Now, what size are they? Okay, they're also a four mil Allen key, which is the same size as what we used to mount the shifter to this. Do I want to mount the shifter to this first? Um, no, I don't. I'm gonna do it afterwards. Let's get this on so you can see how this looks fitted to the play seat without the shifter on. Give you a nice idea of what it looks like. I'm just having to sit up a little bit because my feet are going dead where I'm kneeling down with them pointing out the back. Excuse the funny camera angle. Uh, right, let's get this other one undone here. Now, these rubber grippy inserts, again, I did read the instructions here. You can change these. There's a thicker one and a thinner one, and they're supposed to be what you need for the play seat. In the instructions, Mark says, should you have any problems, 
feel free to either go with two thick ones or two thin ones if you need to. That's why there's these two spare there. They let you, you know, do what you want. So we'll, we'll see. Now, you should literally just push on. Yep, I, I'm the, it looks like they'll fit just fine. You, you probably won't be able to see too well, but it fits just fine. And it's, it's supposed to fit with a gap between the two clamps. If it, they touch one another, then you should swap out the thin, the thin one for the spare thicker one as well. Because you don't want them metal to metal, you want the force to be on the rubber parts so that they grip um, the play seat there. So, let's grab my two bolts again and we'll get this back together. I think it's gonna look quite neat and tidy once it's on here. Should I just tilt that down a little bit? Maybe it will help you see what I'm doing. Yeah, it's a little bit better, isn't it? So, let's get the top one in a couple of threads. Now, if you are a mechanically minded person, you'll know to do this anyway. But Mark does mention it in the instructions. And here's a tip. If you want to be able to see what you're doing, just leave it pointing down to start with until you get to the point where it's really tight. In fact, I've already done this too many times. I can't get the other one in. So I'm slackening it off a little bit. So we'll allow it to just twist around a little more. So it's, it's already quite snug. Let's just back it off a bit more. Yeah, what I was about to say was, if you're mechanically minded, you'll know this already, but when you're doing up a clamp like this, you want to do each bolt evenly. Now, Mark, in the instructions, uses the example of if you do three turns on the right-hand bolt, then go and do three turns on the left-hand bolt. And that's just so it clamps down evenly rather than doing this side all the way up which will ping that side out to be honest you'd never get the bolt in anyway um, but yeah do them evenly a couple of turns at a time um, and he also points out that these are stainless steel bolts going into aluminium thread and so for that reason it would be very easy to tear the thread out of the aluminium clamp. So again, make sure they're not cross-threaded and do them up evenly. Now, I think that's probably, okay, yeah, that's tight enough for now. So I'm going to bring this up to where I want it to be, which is probably about level there. Now again, these are just clamps. They can go, you could put that on anywhere on the tubular sections of this chair, which is how his whole sort of mount system works. Um, you know, depending on what you're, you're using. Now, I am paying attention to how many turns I'm doing on each of these to make sure I'm doing it evenly. And again, you can look at the gap, top and bottom, just to verify that it's not going in on the wonk and that you're not over tightening one side and not the other. So what you're doing here is just sort of squishing, squishing those rubber inserts tight against your play seat. Now, let's see how that feels. That's pretty, I've, I've been using the Allen key like this, so I've got minimum leverage whilst doing this. If you use it that way round, you have much more leverage, you could do much tighter. But already, that's pretty solid. Um, so I'm not, I'm not actually gonna tighten it any more than that for now. I don't think I need to. Let's just tilt this back up a touch, cutting my head off. So that's what it looks like fitted to the seat. It doesn't move, doesn't twist backwards and forwards. Those two little anti-twist rods are doing their job. So that's pretty sweet. And you know, up and down, again, that's like I said, I'm not gonna do it any tighter. That feels solid enough. So let's grab our shifter here. Now, again, in Mark's instructions, for a really clean install, he shows you how to remove these clamps that come as standard. Uh, one there and one back here. So you can literally unscrew these two bolts. You can take them out completely, and that's what these two caps that he gives you are for. They then slot, whoop, they then slot in the top here in place of your thumb screws, I suppose you want to call them, to give you a nice, flush, clean finish. Now, I'm not going to do that because I take my Logitech setup on and off all sorts of different 
seats and wheel stands and whatnot for testing for the you know, for my channel. So if I took these all apart, I wouldn't be able to use them again. But you can picture it would be look, you know, literally like having those removed and just these caps sat in there flush for a really neat install. Now, the clamps don't go in the way of the screw mounts, so I can still fit this to this using the, the supplied bolts. And again, Mark has supplied bolts. There's two of them and a couple of washers to go with them. And again, these do use the supplied four mil Allen key. So let's grab one bolt and one washer. Have a little goosey where the holes are. There you go there. I can do the inner one first. Now, I'm doing it blind. Does it feel like it's gone in the hole? Pardon the pun. It does feel like it's gone in the hole. First time. How about that? Now, what about this one? This one should be easier because we're already lined up. So, what am I doing? Look at this live YouTube video. I'm installing my shifter backwards. <laughs> so, don't do what I've just done. Let's just undo these again. What bell end? Well, this is what you get when you're recording things live and making it up as you go along. Genuine human mistakes. So, there we go. We'd have been changing gear upside down, back to front. All sorts of weird things would have happened. <laughs> right. So, get your shifter. <laughs> See, I got it in the hole first time. It was just, for want of a better description, the wrong hole. So, let's try that again, shall we? Um, now I'm upside down. Am I doing it the right way up? Yeah, I think I am. Yeah. Look at this professional quality YouTube right here. So yeah, I may speed this bit up because there's quite a few threads here. But if I don't, I shall continue to waffle on and you can just watch me waffle on. But um, yeah, get your, get your bolts in, as far as you can with your fingers, then grab your four mil Allen key. And then continue to do them up. With that, again, no need to over tighten things because the captive part in the shifter ultimately joins the plastic housing. So you don't want to be doing them up stupidly tight or you could rip them out. And again, you know, you're not putting much force on this. It's a Logitech setup. So that's it installed. How does that look on camera there? Oh, I'll tell you what, my feet are dead. Right, let's just spin this round a little bit so you can see it, perhaps at a slightly better angle. Let's move that out of the way. Out of the way. Yeah, there we go. So that's how it looks installed in position. I've got a nice rattle because my clamps are still here. So in fact, there's a good reason to remove the clamps if this is your only setup, because they do rattle around a little bit. And you'll hear that when you change gear. But that is hopefully this coming out reasonably clear on the video. So that's it installed. It's more than solid enough for a Logitech shifter. We have got a little bit of, I mean, yeah, there is, you can see here, let me just hold the seat still, otherwise it will be unfair. You can see there is a little bit of downward flex, a little bit of upward flex when going across from left to right. Forwards and backwards, you, you probably can't see it, but there is, again, there's a touch of flex forwards and backwards. Bec I, I'm guessing it's probably because the clamp is on rubber, effectively, so there is, yeah, that's, yeah, it is. Now we can, we, should we tie it up a little bit more? See if we can get rid of some of that. Again, we don't want to go stupid. And now I'm using the Allen key the other way around to give me the extra leverage. And we're going to do the same number of turns. Where is it gone? Same number of turns, top and bottom. 
just to make sure we get even clamping force. So I've done that and now I'm going to go an extra couple on the bottom. And then I'll go an extra couple on the top to match the two I just did on the bottom. These are sort of like half or quarter turns. Has that made any difference? No, there's still that bit of flex there. So ultimately, because we're mounted on rubber, there's going to be a little bit of flex. But that's fine, you know. It's, it is what it is. It's solid enough for the Logitech cell, which is what we got here. Um, it'll probably be fine for the Thrustmaster too. I don't, again, I haven't got the Thrustmaster version of this or the Fanatic version of this. They may even be a little beefier because some of the stuff I see Mark does sort of all clamps down around the side here as well. So that could be more solid than what this one is. But it's not an unacceptable amount of, of movement, you know? It's, again, the whole chair has a certain degree of movement because it is a fold away seat. Um, and it, you know, it's, yeah, it's not, you can see it in the video there, there's a little bit of play. Perfectly acceptable. It doesn't require a lot of force, you know, to move, to move this around anyway. So, yeah, oh, I tell you what, I don't recommend doing YouTube videos on your, on your knees, at least not at my age. So, what do I think of the shift amount? I think the shift amount's good. I like the quality, I love the presentation, I like the spare bits we get, you know, should you lose something, should you want to customise it a little bit more. I like the inclusion of the, of the little stickers, it's quite a nice touch, you get one, out, one Allen key out of the necessary three that you need. So don't forget, you will need two others and a, a 13 mil spanner. I like the fact that everything comes labeled up as it, as it needs to be to make it a bit easier for you. The instructions are clear. They are digital instructions. They don't come in the box. I like the way it looks bolted to the play seat and the rigidity is rigid enough. Um, because it is mounted on on rubber there, so um, so yeah, a big thanks to to Mark for sending this over to us. Um, I've eventually got round to. He, he was messaging me the other day saying, "What do you think? What do you think?" And I was like, "I haven't even unboxed it yet, Mark, because I'm saving the unboxing for the video." So there we go. <laughs> I've finally unboxed it for you. Um, but yeah, should you be looking for a well-made, well thought out? and well designed and, and sort of polished to it and really well presented shift amount, then this is a good shift amount to use. You know, there are other options. Um, there are cheaper ones, there are more expensive ones, there are ones of a similar price that just, like, like I say, the, the official play seat one is, is crap. So yeah, I wouldn't use that. Puts it in a stupid place. But, um, but yeah, that's, that's my sort of first impressions of the unboxing and, and my review. I, I won't do a driving segment using it. There's no, you know, there's no real need you can see, you know, I can change gear here well enough for you to see, you know, the, the little bit of flex that there is in it. So there's no need for me to do a driving, a driving segment. But yeah, thanks very much to everyone for watching. I hope you've enjoyed the video. Um, thanks to my subscribers, my patrons, the people that donate. Thanks to Mark once again for sending this over. Um, and I look forward to speaking to you in the future. Uh, as always, everyone, take it easy and have a great weekend.